Battle Cry of Freedom by Nachman Nordzin. Part 2. The Slogans. Slogan 23. Continually train in the three general principles. Chi dun sum la tag tu lab. Ride the mind excellently with honourable reliability, dignified composure and impartial patience. Dressage could be said to be the embodiment of the three general principles, honour, dignity and impartiality. The rider asks with the most subtle and imperceptible instructions. Everything looks effortless, as if horse and rider are a single unit gliding across the arena. The beauty of the performance is the result of hard work and relies on the development of a relationship built upon honour. Trust between horse and rider is essential. Each relies upon the other. In dressage, the horse is in full is in control of the full range of its potential. The collected trot is composed, the working trot relaxed, and the extended trot energetic. All movements are executed perfectly. The horse is beautifully turned out with plaited mane, quarter marks, and exquisitely polished tack. The rider is elegant and dignified in long boots with spurs, white breeches, white shirt and stock, a black top coat with tails, white gloves and a top hat. The rider wishes to perform well and asks this of the horse, but treats the horse fairly. If the horse is unsettled or unwell, upset by the noise of the arena, stiff from the journey to the stadium or otherwise below par, the rider will retire gracefully from the test if necessary. If a mistake is made through inaccurate riding, the rider takes responsibility and does not blame the horse. An aspect of honour is the capacity to keep a promise. Being able to follow through on intention is the integrity of being a practitioner. It is important for practitioners to see for themselves that they can keep promises and are reliable. This develops confidence and certainty. It is sensible to start with small vows, such as keeping to a daily meditation practice commitment. Once experience is gained in keeping little vows, larger or more formal vows can be embraced, such as the commitment of refuge, precept vows or the vows of ordination. Nat Pachogim and Kandra Dachin say, The first aspect of the Pawo's honour is to be worthy of admiration. The Pawo is evidently honourable with respect to the manner in which he makes decisions, especially those which affect others. He does not seek escape routes at the expense of others. He does not default on promises, even if they are made in ignorance of criteria, which would have predicated against a promise being given. Honour is also essential in daily life, keeping promises made to friends and family, in the workplace, even in per personal health and fitness regimes, are just as valuable. Napichurgim and Kandra Dechen say, The third aspect of the Pawo's honour is to be genuine, credible and reliable, having the self-respect of knowing that he can live by his word and knowing that he has done so over a period of time is a strong foundation. The dignity of practitioners riding the mind is very like a dressage performance. There is no outward show of effort and achievement self-arises through engagement with method. The horse is asked and performs intricate movements dis that display the natural strength flexibility and beauty of the horse. The practitioner trains the mind to discover its natural power, flexibility and clarity. Nak Pachurgyam and Kandra Dechen say, the eighth aspect of the Pawo's honour is the grace which accompanies acknowledged reputation. 
The Pawo has illustrious grace because he is not swayed by concepts of status or prestige. He owns his own situation with pri without pride or self-abnegation. Committed practitioners are grounded in emptiness. They are empty in relation to teacher and method. They understand that awakening is dependent on everyone and everything. They hold the natural dignity of empty appreciation. Practitioners wholeheartedly embrace the reality that life is not fair and do not rail against harsh life circumstances. They respond impartially when they are the object of good or bad fortune. They are impartial in their wish to help the victims of ill luck. They are impartial in their enthusiasm to celebrate with the recipients of good luck. Awakening heroes do not choose to be kind to some and ignore others, but respond appropriately wherever a need is perceived. They are receptive to the needs of others, breathing in pain and breathing out benefit, and offering practical help where possible. There is no partiality or ulterior motive in being patient or in acts of kindness. This is the path of awakening.